Safety, and hopefully we're going to have a very pleasant uh, on-track action. This 20 minutes qualifying session has already begun. The cars are making their way out onto the circuit in what is a, an entertaining uh, competition. Uh, 17 degrees the air temperature. Track temperature is 22.2 degrees. And there are the cars of the Blancpain GT Sports Club making their way out onto the circuit now. And uh, this for a championship for bronze rank drivers. And it's a chance for them to have one person races in these cars around some of the best tracks in the world. Mizano, Brands Hatch, Paul Ricard, Spa Francorchamps, and Barcelona, the five round calendar. And this is the first round, and a fantastic 27 cars have been entered for this race. And here's a look at them. We've got the likes of uh, Claude-Yves Gosselin out there. Watch out for Pierre Hershey, a very experienced racer. Runmi Wong Chong Yao is another man to watch out for. Martin Lanting is the man who won the Iron Cup last year, which is the class for drivers over the age of 60. Uh, Willem de Punder is out there as well. Uh, Louis-Philippe Sonnen, uh, Sonnen sorry, is uh, another strong driver. And look at this, the list goes on and on. Mario Cordoni took pole position and won both races here last year, so he's going to be a man to watch in this race particularly. And then the likes of Christian Hook, Patrick van Klabeke and Yoshiki Omura completing our 27 starters. Really excellent stuff then. And uh, we see this 20 minute battle for pole position unfold in front of our eyes then. And the quickest time we've seen so far today is at 1 minute 36.476. That was set by 22 car of Nicolas Misselin this morning. This is Mario Cassaday in the Attempto Racing Lamborghini Super Trofeo coming across the line now. Been racing since he ended FIA GT all the way back in 1998. And, but he hasn't raced internationally since about 2012. So this is marking Cassaday's return to racing. wide as he comes down through uh, the turn four or five and then this left-hander at turn six sequence of corners purple in the first sector but he's the first man to come through the first sector so that's not particularly surprising as I say Miss Lan in the uh, the CMR car was the quickest this morning but only by a hundredth of a second oh and there's a spin already and it's the Trying to make it out, 65 car of Alexis de Bernardi, the Kessel Ferrari, the Luxembourg racer who's facing the wrong way. This is his first race outside of the Ferrari Challenge. He's been racing there since 2009. As we go back to Cassaday, and Klabaka has now set the fastest time in the uh, middle sector, uh, sorry, first sector, I should say. Cassidy gets on the brakes. His lap time this morning was a 1 minute 39.9. That's his best lap around this Mazzano circuit over the course of the day. Just a two day weekend for these guys. Free practice and qualifying and a race today and then a race tomorrow. As he comes over the line, it's going to be in the mid 40s, 1 minute 44.758, our first lap time on the board. But right behind him, here comes Mario Cordoni. Is this going to be a good lap for Cordoni? It's quicker, a 41.4. This is the man who won both races here last year and took pole position, took four wins last season, but didn't compete in all the rounds. So as a result, wasn't in the championship hunt. Former French Porsche Carrera Cup racer. And this now is one of the Acker Mercedes. It's Maurice Ricci at the wheel. Personal bets in the first two sectors, as you'd expect. The man who was been around the block in GT racing. FIA GT3, Spanish GT, Belgian GT, Porsche Carrera Cup in France, as well as a few rounds in the Blancpain Endurance Series over the last few years. As Ritchie now comes to the final corner. Good first sector from Miss Lamb, we'll keep an eye out on him. At the moment it's Cordoni who is the quickest. Ritchie is not going to challenge that. It is a 1 minute 46.817. Anthony Pons in the other Acker entry, this time uh, Ferrari 458 GTE car.
personal uh, best of anyone in the middle sector. So keep an eye on Pons here as he comes across the line. Are we going to see him beat Mario Cordoni's time? No, we're not. He goes fifth quickest. So Cordoni, uh, second at the moment, is Perazzini in the AF Corsa Ferrari. This is Jean-Michel Bard, who's done a very good first sector now in that WRT Audi. He got his best result here last season, which was a fourth place finish. The middle sector, though, is about a second and a half down on where it needs to be. The middle sector set by, fastest middle sector set by Cordoni. And he's got some traffic as well. So that has not worked out for Jean-Michel Bart, getting caught up behind Leon Price, the South African who moves out of the way eventually. But that will uh, really have compromised Jean-Michel's run. And to the top of the timings goes Mislam, a 36.255. That's the quickest lap time we've seen so far this weekend. Seven tenths of a second quicker than anyone else. So good lap from Mislam. As we go back to Anthony Pons. Uh, Mislam was a very late entry to this event. He was only scrutineered this morning, just kind of rocked up, said, can I race? And then said, yeah. And now he's quickest of anyone and on provisional pole position. Still a long way to go in this session. Another 13 minutes remaining. As Pons goes second quickest then, less than a tenth of a second, slower than Miss Land. That's a very good lap from Pons. So we see uh, everybody trying to battle for position. Now here is Mislan who had a very good first sector, but must have got some traffic in that middle sector. Now he's got a clean run though, so this next lap for Mislan could be one to watch. The 2009 Ferrari Challenge Europe champion. Let's see what he's got. Only 33 years old, Mislan. So one of the younger guns in the championship in that 22 car. A little bit clunky through turns four and five. Flashing his lights because up in front of him is Mario Cordoni, who is now the quickest man again. A one minute 36 zero for Cordoni. And he could hold up Miss Lan here if all goes to plan, but no, he does well. Cordoni gets out of the way. And that'll be no problem for Miss Land to get through. Attacking the apex as he comes down into turns nine and ten. Not really hooking it up on the exit onto that long back straight. But if you take a wider line, you might be able to carry more straight line speed. Personal West in the middle sector for Miss Land. He's only a tenth of a second down on Mario Cordoni at the moment. These two are the men we're expecting to battle it out for pole position. But don't forget we've got Anthony Pons in there as well in the Aka Ferrari. Just two more corners to go for Miss Lamp. Using all of the road, neatly done. One more turn. Is this going to be good enough for pole position then? Across the line comes Nicola Miss Lamp. Can he go faster than Cordoni? Across the line, yes he can. One minute 35.445. Six tenths of a second quicker than Cordoni. Lines drawn by Mislan. This, meanwhile, is the uh, Corvette of Nicolas van der Erendonk. And van der Erendonk has done personal bests in the first two sectors. Where's this going to put him? Eighth quickest then for van der Erendonk in the uh, Seleslach Corvette. Second in the Dutch Supercar Challenge last year and third in the Benelux Porsche GT3 Cup. So a good season in 2015 for Van Deer and Donk. He's going to want to try and repeat that this year in the Blanc Pan GT Sports Club. First sector, 25-9, so not super fast. Using all of the road down at turn eight. With the right hand kink at nine and then it tightens down into turn 10. As 
Nicholas van der Donk. He makes his way down the back straight. It's a, a good, good run from van der Donk so far. But again, nothing really happening in this lap for him. Jean-Michel Bart's just done the fastest first sector. Cordoni's done the fastest middle sector. So lap time's flying in all over the place. We'll keep an eye on them. Cordoni doesn't convert it, though, into a uh, pole position challenge. In fact, Pierre Hershey has just done an identical time to Cordoni. Both second and third place men have done a 1 minute 36.052. That's how tight the competition is, especially up at the front. Nine minutes to go. We may see these drivers come in, put on a new set of tyres and go for it again. This is Jean-Michel Bart. Did he manage to improve? No. A best first sector, but then lost out in the second two sectors. Meanwhile, Nicolas Mislin has gone fastest again in sector one. He's really getting this hooked up. There's the 98 car of Jan Brunstedt, but here is the man to watch. Nicola Mislan out onto the back straight. Now he has had to, by the looks of things, contend with some traffic on this lap. We'll see if that has affected his middle sector. It has, but only by three tenths of a second. So if Mislan can hook up this final sector, he could still improve. Eight minutes to go through the final couple of corners. Comes Mislan. through turn 16 and straight lines it towards the line. Is this going to be an improvement on a 35.445? Yes, it is, a 35.381. So Mislan extends his advantage to over half a second over Cordoni. Now, what are we seeing? Oh, goodness me. Out of nowhere there for Pierre Felligioni. Not quite sure how he managed that one, but he was uh, all sorts of facing funny ways in that Sandalog Audi. Got away with it though, and uh, continued on his way. Here's the 666 uh, Squadra Corsa Ferrari for Yoshiki Omura. Omura at the moment, 15th quickest. Personal best in the first sector. Middle sector, nothing to write home to Switzerland about. raced in Italian Formula 2 last year, so knows this Mazzano circuit. He's also second in Formula 2000 Italy back in 2011. So a lot of experience in this country. As Yoshiki Omura comes out of the final corner and crosses the line, are we going to see an improvement from his current 15th place spot? No, he remains in 15th, uh, despite setting his personal best lap time. through the final corner now then comes Anthony Pons. He's got some clear lapping, well, ahead of him, but now he's moved out of the way after a personal best in the first two sectors. Perhaps a mistake somewhere in that final sector for Pons because he remains in fourth place and uh, oh, he picked up some traffic out there, I believe. Now, look, look at this. Look at this funky car. This is Coach McKenzie's HP Racing Lamborghini, the team run by Harry Prochick, former Blancpain race winner and the German coach McKenzie is making his way around the final corner now you do find a lot of these drivers race under pseudonyms and I imagine this is one of those examples if it's not I'm being very offensive but uh, we do have quite a lot of pseudonyms out there in this championship as uh, McKenzie makes his way down towards the right hander uh, the likes of Christian Hook out there, and uh, oh, and off into the gravel. That's Omura. And that is over. The Swiss driver spinning into the gravel trap, and that's going to hurt Mario Cordoni because he has done a personal best in the first sector as he tries to close in on Miss Land's pole position time. There will now be yellow flags out in sector two. Across the line then comes Coach McKenzie. Are we going to see an improvement from him? The 17 car remains in 12th place. We're not because that was an outlap, so uh, that's why we didn't see an improvement.
less than five minutes to go in the first qualifying session of the season. Cordoni has done the fastest middle sector of anyone, but he's got traffic coming into the final corner, and that is really going to hurt Cordoni. Not only would he have traffic, he also had a yellow flag to deal with. Across the line he comes, and it's a 36.1, which is two tenths slower than he managed previously, and the Italian will be absolutely furious in there. Oh, there was the moment for Yoshiki Omura. Just got unsettled on the way into uh, the turn 13 right-hander. And he's walking away from his car because that is beached. Here's Maurice Ritchie. Uh, currently down in 23rd place, Ritchie at the moment. Uh, no, sorry, my apologies. Ninth place for Ritchie. See if he can get any improvements this time through. Across the line. Ninth at the moment. And he stays in ninth place. One of the drivers in the Iron Cup, Maurice Ritchie. Another of those is Jan Brunsted, the Swede who raced in Swedish Formula 3 back in 1977 before his career took a hold. But he has won the Swedish GT Championship a couple of years ago. And now he's here racing for JB Motorsport, his own team. He comes out onto the back stretch in that uh, Audi, last year's Audi. Most, I think all of the Audis in the championship are last year's. We have got a, a 488 out there in the hands of Patrick van Klabaker. And he is currently, he's actually currently not showing on the timing screens, unfortunately, so perhaps we haven't got the 488 out there. We've had 26 of our 26 entrants on the circuit. And actually looking at it, he didn't take part in free practice two either, so perhaps troubles for Patrick van Klabaker. Through the final corner comes Brunstedt. Any improvements from him? remains in 16th place a personal best in the final sector though and he's got some clear road in front of him so perhaps he can take advantage here getting a little bit busy further back as the HTP uh, Mercedes of Willem de Bunder backs out of the way of the 458 in the hands of Christian Hook who is one of a couple of drivers racing in the Sprint Cup 2 this weekend so Hook had a quick switch around from Blancpain Sprint qualifying to Block Pan GT Sports Club qualifying. We've got a, a minute and a half to go. It is a different car that uh, Hook is racing in the Block Pan GT series. For the Black Pearl racing team. As he now comes through the final corner. And now we're going to see an improvement from Hook. Currently eighth at the moment. And uh, he doesn't improve. There is Mario Cordoni. Now then, have we got one last run for Mario Cordoni? He's uh, slowing at the moment, I think, just to try and get some clear air. Uh, and then push on one final tour, potentially. And uh, actually, he has a, had a spin as Cordoni. And yes, he lost, goodness me, he lost ages in the middle sector. About 50 seconds in the middle sector. So Mario Cordoni may have lost his chance to take pole position away from Mislan. Mislan's been in the pits now for quite a while. He thinks he's got the maximum out of the car. As we see the Mercedes SLS of Jean-Paul Buffin, the 2012 French GT Cup champion his way through the final two corners now and he is currently 21st quickest and we haven't had personal bests from him in either of the two sectors so six seconds left on the clock as he crosses the line he will get another run if he wants it it was turn six where um, Cordoni spun coming out onto that back straight good first sector then from Perazzini here in car number 50 which is the AF Corsa GTE entry. Now, is he getting some traffic here? 
the middle sector of 36.8 isn't particularly strong. Pedazzini at the moment is lying in fourth place. So unless he can do something magical in this final sector, I don't think it's going to be any better. And he's going to come into the pits. He will stay, take pole though for the Iron Cup, which is for the drivers over the age of 60. There's the chequered flag. Uh, we'll keep an eye out. I was going to say for uh, Yoshiki Amora because he's done personal best in sector one and sector two, but he's in the gravel trap in sector three, so well, that doesn't make much difference. Here's Jean-Michel Bart. No improvements for him on this lap. Will he decide to stay out just in case he turns in a miracle final sector? He does. Runs wide over the curving. The checkered flag falls, and Jean-Michel Bart will start the race in sixth position, most likely. I don't think there's anyone else out there that can that can challenge him. There is Mario Cordoni then on that last lap did a 36.4, so didn't have enough time in hand to beat Nicola Mislam. Into the pits, trundles Jean-Paul Buffin. There's Cordoni for the first time in GT Sports Club history is beaten to pole at Mazzano. Admittedly, it's only the second race we've had here, but still, Cordoni would have been many people's favourites for pole position, but in the end, it was almost six tenths of a second that Nicola Mislan took pole position with. But I think we're going to have, as uh, Omura's car is removed from the gravel trap, I think we're going to have a very, very entertaining race with 26, perhaps 27 cars on the grid. Here's a look at the classification then, Nicola Mislan. Quickest man of anyone, a 1 minute 35.381, almost six tenths clear of Mario Gordoni. Pierre Hershey, right there, less than a tenth behind Gordoni. And then we've got Giuseppe, uh, Pierre Giuseppe Perazzini in fourth place, then Anthony Pons in sixth. Uh, any surprises further down the order? Maybe would have expected a bit more from Claude-Yves Grosselin, uh, the former Formula 3000 racer. He's down in 15th position. Yoshiki Yamura couldn't improve from uh, his 18th place because he ended up in the gravel trap. And Michael Luzic, completing the 26 runners. So the car's now making their way back around towards the pit lane, and it'll be Nicola Mislan who will start on pole position later on. Here's a look back at the highlights. It was all very busy in the early stages as people tried to find some position on track. Coach McKenzie making a way through there. Uh, Nicholas Van Dierendonk out in the Sellers Lach Corvette was keeping us entertained. Where did he end up qualifying? 11th place, just outside of the top 10. Anthony Pons uh, was there or thereabouts with the pole sitters, but no one could match the 22 car, even though the, the 458 entry of Christian Hook tried to slow him down. No one could slow down the 22 Nicholas Mislan car enough. And it was uh, there was the, the odd spin from Pierre Felligioni. And where did Felligioni end up? 24th quickest in the end. As we got into the closing stages, Yoshiki Omura was in the gravel trap. Still some more action out there, but the man to beat was Nicola Mislan, and he was the man. There was the spin then for Mario Cordoni. He will start second on the grid on the front row, but no one could stop Nicola Mislan. He will be on pole position for the first race of the season later on today at quarter to seven. <laughs> 